In this video, we're going to do some questions about relations. So for the first one, I have to prove that if R1 and R2 are reflexive relations, then the intersection of R1 and R2 is also reflexive. So this one is pretty straightforward, but it's just good to show you an example of how you prove these things. So first of all, we're going to pick some arbitrary xx that is in R1 and also in R2. Okay, so that's the first step. So this is the first condition we're saying, okay, suppose xx is an R1 and R2. Well, then we know that that xx is going to be in the intersection of R1 and R2 because it's in both. And for any pair xx that we pick in R1 and R2, xx is going to be in the intersection. Therefore, R1 intersection R2 is reflexive. And I know you might be thinking, well, duh. But the question is, can you prove it? And you have to be able to prove this. So first we pick an arbitrary pair in both. We show the arbitrary pair is in the intersection. And because that's true for any arbitrary pair we picked, the intersection is reflexive. So if I said uh, symmetry, could you prove that? Or would that not be a proof? Would you have to find a counterexample? So you need to be thinking about these things for exams. The second one is very examination-y because I'm introducing a new relation in a question and I'm asking you some questions about it. So I'm introducing this notion of irreflexive. I'm saying, look, if for all x, xx is not in R, then R is irreflexive. So I'm saying x is never related to itself. If we have x, then this relation here never ever occurs, ever. Okay, so for the first part, I want you to give me an example of a relation where R is irreflexive and transitive but it's not symmetric. So nothing is related to itself and there's some order to it, but there's no symmetry. So uh, when I think of irreflexive and things not relating to themselves, the first thing I think of is the less than sign or the greater than sign. So I think of this, I think of this X less than Y. This is my first instinct. So does it satisfy these conditions? Okay. X is never going to be less than itself is less than transitive yeah because if x is less than y and y is less than z then x is less than z so that's good and it's not symmetric because if x is less than y then well y can't be less than x too so we're good that is an example of irreflexive and transitive but not symmetric so again another example is just x is greater than y part two show that if r is transitive and symmetric it cannot be irreflexive so this is a little bit trickier. First, we have to make some assumptions here. So we know that x r y and y r z implies that x r z, and we also know that if x r y, then we're going to get y r x. So it can't be irreflexive. So we have to assume that x is related to something. So we're going to assume that x is related to y, for example. Then what happens is by symmetry, we get that y is related to x. But if x is related to y and y is related to x, then we're going to get that x is related to x by transitivity. So if r is transitive and symmetric, then it's going to be reflexive. So if it's reflexive, if we have this xrx for any element that's related to another one, then clearly it can't be irreflexive. So there we go, there's the proof. So those were two questions about relations. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them the best that I can.